Happy New Year. Thank you for joining me in a week one. Who, me? A homemaker? Now, 21 years ago, I became a homemaker. Stayed home with our children. That was hard to do because before then, I was working full time. In fact, our oldest, she was two when I stopped working full time outside the home. Doesn't mean my work stopped in the home. In fact, it became a little bit more complicated. You know, before, I'd clean the house and we'd have breakfast and all that kind of stuff and I'd clean up and we'd leave the house for eight to ten hours and then we'd come back, make a little bit of a mess, clean it up and she'd go to bed and I'd go to bed. So it was really easy to maintain a house. However, once I stayed home, it was a totally different story. Think about it. Your desk at work, it gets messy, right? Or it can or it did, I don't know. Or those workspaces that you shared with other people. It gets messy. People don't always put things away or throw things away. Well, homemaking is 24-7. So that's what I want to talk about today in her, in her chapter, Who Me, a Homemaker. She says in here that she's not Homemaker of the Year. Well, either am I, quite honestly. <laughs> I have pockets here and there of things. I'm looking up at my angel and seeing the cobwebs on her wings. <laughs> I'll show you that a little bit later. But... Her plan was not to write a book. Her plan was to read one. But what she was looking for, things like how to surprise her family with something on Valentine's Day or how to plant bulbs, that did not exist in the one book that she was wanting. So she read multiple books. And that's another thing that I love about uh, Lynn is that she has taken bits and pieces from every book and that she, that she enjoyed or things that she liked about it. And she put it in here as well. Now she goes on to say that we as homemakers often get criticized that homemaking isn't a job. Oh, you just stay home. Well, it's not like that. I, as much as I'd rather sit around eating bonbons all day and watch whatever I want, I don't have time for that. I'm sure you don't either. I don't want to make time for that either. There are so many other things I want to do. Well, even though I don't go into an office every day, I do have a job that's We'd go to cemeteries for a picnic because think about it, it's not crowded with a bunch of screaming kids. You have, uh, you teach children, that are your children respect on how to uh, walk in a cemetery. And we made games of it. Find the oldest person, find the youngest person, find the oldest tombstone, find the newest tombstone. Which one's your favorite? Find something that is that's interesting. And we just did stuff like that and made games of it. And we really enjoyed it. And it was an opportunity for us to delve in a little bit into history. Like, why did so many people pass away in 1918, 1919? So those were some fun things that we were able to do. And you know what? Most cemeteries are very well kept. So you're not running the risk of bark chips and splinters and all that kind of stuff. It's beautiful grass. So we so we'd pack our picnic and we'd go there. So that's one of them. Another thing was I was able to volunteer for activities with my kids. You know, with my husband working full time, he would have to take a vacation day to go do something like that.
medical advocate. I do not know how someone working full time, being a mom and all that kind of stuff could also then add helping someone with dementia by taking them to every doctor's appointment, being their medical advocate, helping them with their shopping, uh, and all that type of stuff when they're lacking reading skills, writing skills, and they don't drive. It's not, it's a big and hard of hearing and you're dealing with dementia. There's a lot of those things. So to be able to do that for someone is very rewarding. Now, how does this book still affect me? Because my children are all grown. I'm going to tell you, this is how it affects me, and I'll show you in a little bit. But this week, the first week of January, we are at the end of the 12 days of Christmas. Now, that's one of those cool things I found as I was doing stuff. Christmas, so here's another sidebar. Christmas is my husband's favorite time of year. But there's almost, there's this huge letdown for him right after Christmas because there's nothing. There's nothing. We never celebrated anything after that. So we started celebrating Three Kings Day. Now, Three Kings Day is the end of the 12 days of Christmas. And it's uh, when the three kings supposedly arrived to give gifts to Jesus. Well, I have so many wonderful decorations. And I love to decorate for each season. So if you look behind me, you'll see Christmas up. Well, Three Kings Day does a couple things for us. We undecorate Christmas. We deep clean. We clean off our cobwebby angel, which I will show you shortly. And then we uh, redecorate for the spring. So I bring out all those things that I love, that, that we have loved, and bring them out and we redecorate for the spring. Now, after all that's been done, we might order pizza or we might get something order something and eat in and just enjoy the time together and then the three kings usually have a gift now when the kids were growing up there were lots of different things the kids received usually it was some sort of game so that we could go outside or a board game that we could play and it's kind of changed over the years if there's something that they didn't get for Christmas that they really wanted that might be when that happened um, sometimes it was um, family gift and sometimes it was individual it just kind of depended well how does that work with my children being grown and out of the home I'll tell you they love coming back and helping so this year my oldest will not uh, be joining us um, and with COVID even my son is a little bit iffy so I do not know if he's going to be home but my youngest still lives with us and so she will be helping with that. So I just wanted to show you a few things. You know, one of the things that we're going to be taking down is our Advent and our Advent wreath. And that's over here. You'll see all those candles are burned. This is one of those books I absolutely love. And you're going to see that there's some fire damage up here. That's a story I'll talk about in December or in, in, in November. But um, we'll also be talking about this at that time. But if you're interested in it now, in finding it now, it's called A Family Advent, Keeping the Savior in the Season. I'm not sure if that's going to show up backwards or not on your screen, but it's one of those that I absolutely love. And then I also found this book. So right after Christmas, because we are in the 12 days of, of Christmas right now, I believe we're day 7, um, here is this really fun book, and it explains um, what those are all about. What does it mean by my true love? And so with younger children, these are those fun things to read, and they, have, they cite verses. So I just really have loved and enjoyed uh, this as well. And I do have, um, at some point, um, I have um, ornaments, the 12 days ornaments. I'm missing one, and I've been holding out for that one for years. I cannot find it. Uh, and I want to hang them on my valences um, at the Christmas season because that's when we're kind of coming out. So I'm going to show you real quickly. I'm going to pause and turn around so that you can kind of see um, my home and the things I love to do. Here's our Christmas tree. Poinsettia. Oh, it's so sad to not see any gifts under there. We have a little village that we put together over here. 
Let's see, this picture over here is a lady looking at a Christmas tree. That doesn't belong up here around. Here's a beautiful picture of Mary with baby Jesus. So I don't keep that up very often or throughout the year either. And of course my living room changes around as well. There's our little countdown to Christmas, which my adult children still use when they come in. So just all these fun things. Let's be, let me back up. This is a, this was made a couple years ago from Dollar Tree stuff. This, these are two Christmas trees and then I just uh, put it all together. So I try to decorate pretty much everywhere I can think. This is a new picture for me. Uh, it's great niece's footprints and they turn them into little angels. But I have a tendency to do this, put like items together. Angels up, up there. And then down here we've got nativities. And then over here, this is my grandmother's precious moments um, that we wanted on display while she was living with us. Uh, and I don't know if you can see the flower, notice that little flower in between the two pictures. So um, one of the things I do, and I'll show you in a little bit, is I make these little, little bunches of flowers um, to hang up on nails so that I'm not always taking nails down and putting them back up and putting more holes in. Okay. I even do this with my pillows. I create these little envelope type covers and I just switch out for the season if I have a fabric I love. I love this one. I have the three kings on it and it's the angels and the shepherds and then over here is you know the nativity. It's just beautiful. I love it. Here we go. I'm going to take one of these down. So sometimes there'll be, you know, pictures up here, but if I don't have something to put there, I'll put these. And all I did is I hot glued them to a round piece of cardboard, and then I used just a uh, ribbon and made a loop. And then instead of putting in new holes or changing up holes in my wall, let's see if I can do this one-handed. I just hang these back up. And I just used what I had on hand. These were left over. The flowers were left over from whatever I had purchased for my, um, boy. <laughs> Take care of that later. Um, for, um, what is it? That, uh, thing I put over the, the mirror. Here we go. This used to hang up in a window, but, um, we have changed out this one window, so I no longer have that. And then, of course, I love these little decals for my granddaughter when she comes. And then over here, if you're familiar with the Polar Express, this, these are my Polar Express mugs. I did not, we did not go to the Polar Express. We went one time. I think we had four mugs and then um, my neighbors were moving and they were getting rid of the pursue homemaking or even if um, you still do work and you want to do still want to do certain things I hope you get a few little ideas that can benefit you and your family I love that um, Lynn uh, Bowen Walker is a Christian uh, woman uh, there are scriptures that she cites in here uh, but even if you're not there are some wonderful things that benefit you no matter what your belief system is so blessings to you and uh, thanks for joining me on this 52 week trip with Lynn Bowen Walker on Queen of the Castle.